Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting um, a sort of an experimental semi-abstract flower painting. I'm going to be using cling film or glad wrap and masking fluid to help me create um, some interesting effects hopefully. You can see here that I have drawn out some um, Japanese anemones um, and then painted them over with masking fluid. My masking fluid is clear, so I'm afraid it doesn't show up as well. Next time I buy some, I'll try and get some blue tinted masking fluid so it shows up a bit better, but hopefully you can see it here. So what I'm gonna do first is wet my page fairly randomly across it in sort of a shallow diagonals, and then apply two colors. The colours I'm using today is, is um, Cobalt Violet Deep Hue and Sepia. So I'm looking for a semi-abstract background in these two colours. Um, so I'm just putting the paint on with more of the violet across the top and the sepia across the bottom of the painting, but still leaving some white gaps of unpainted paper. Once I've got the paint on, I'll use a water misting spray, and it's the type that hairdressers use that you can find online. And I'll spray the paint, and because my board is at an angle of 45 degrees, you can see the paint and water begin to flow and run downwards in some interesting patterns. As soon as I like the look of it, I'll lay it flat and then clean off any pooling paint and water from the tape around the edges. And now that the painting is flat and the wash is where I want it to be, I'm going to tear off a large sheet of um, the cling film or plastic food wrap or glad wrap as it's known in some countries. And I'm going to lay it across the whole painting um, and allow the cling film to sort of cling in parts, pull it out, sort of stretch it a little bit. And you can see as I press it onto the paper, I hope you can see shapes and shards and sort of interesting textures beginning to appear where some of the cling film clings to the paint and other parts it allows air um, through those sort of shardy sort of gaps and you get darker and lighter areas and some really pretty textures. So now I'm going to leave it to dry completely and not touch it for a few hours so that I get the best effects. So here it is, and even though it's dried a bit lighter, in real life it's quite a lot brighter than it is here because the beautiful sun is streaming in through the windows of my studio. So now I'm going to remove the masking fluid from the flowers by rubbing it off either with a clean finger or an eraser. And then brush off any crumbs with a dry brush and we're ready to start painting in these anemones. Now the anemones have got this beautiful colour, I think they come in a few different colours, but they come um, for me in this sort of lovely pale pinky violet. And so I'm going to be trying to sort of create that effect on the petals, um, working to put in some shadows, some shape, some slight veins on the flowers and to darken up these stems. So the flowers themselves are going to be reasonably detailed, I think. Well, as detailed as I can get them, because I'm not a very experienced flower painter, but it is something I'm trying to learn at the moment. So I'm going to try and sort of get some nice lights and darks and sort of vein patterns and things like that on these, le on these uh, flower petals. And then when I paint the leaves, I'm going to paint the leaves very quickly and in a very abstract sort of loose way so that the flowers remain the focal point and everything else is kind of semi-abstract and quite sort of sort of washy and stylized I suppose. When I'm painting um, for me personally the most important thing that I'm thinking about all the time is tonal value Colour comes second. I mean, I love colour, but I rarely use local natural colours. I like to sort of play around with colours and explore compositions that, that use kind of fairly sort of drab or muted palettes. 
Here I like this sort of soft pastel that's been muted by the brown. Um, but what I'm looking for in the flowers is really strong darks, which I can slowly build up, um, trying to get in some of the areas that are in shadow, but also some of the areas that have got darker, richer veins of colour too. So I'm really focusing on the value, keeping some of the petals still the white of the paper and there will be some yellow stamens in the centre of some of the flowers but I'll put that detail in at the end. At the moment I'm mostly going to be working with the cobalt violet uh, for the flowers to keep them nice and clean and pure and then with the leaves I'll use the cobalt violet but I'll add some sepia into the leaves to give them some shadow. But I'm not going to put any sepia into the flower petals. The nice thing about watercolour is its transparent nature, so you can slowly but surely build up uh, light, fresh layers of watercolour um, one on top of the other and that will gradually darken your tones and enrich your hues as well. If you work from light to dark and then pick out the real darkest points of these flowers or whatever details it is that you're painting, then you'll find that way you can sort of balance your painting as you go along, um, slowly building up the tones and keeping a nice sort of transparent, fresh look to your painting at the same time. And this involves saving out some of the white of the paper too, because your white will contrast or counterchange beautifully against the darker parts of the petals and give you some beautiful effects. You can see there when I've painted in the veins on that central flower, on that, that, that petal that sort of comes up towards um, the left, or the right, sorry, I <laughs> got confused. Um, that little detail there really stands out beautifully against the softer, more muted tones and darks of the other petals. So I'm working in exactly the same way um, for the other flowers as well, just building up the darks the details and the soft passages of paler violet whilst leaving as much white of the paper as I can. And now moving on to the more abstract leaves. I've left a few gaps between some of the stems to place my leaves, which I lightly penciled in the rough area where they're going to go. They're kind of ragged leaves with three sort of little ragged points. Um, and I'm thinking of that, but without overthinking it, when I paint my leaves and just trying to get some bend and twist to them, uh, painting them quickly and loosely with the cobalt violet deep hue and my Polina Bright um, number one round synthetic brush um, to get these leaves loose and quickly painted. And that way they should contrast nicely against the flowers themselves and sort of enhance them, but without detracting from the focal point of the flowers. Back to the calligraphy brush and I can join the leaves to the stems in places. And I can use a card to scrape in some veins through the leaves here and there. Add a few more stems and details. And then I can go back to my Polina Bright and add sepia into the wet leaves and it should run and diffuse gently but still stay nice and dark and give me that darker, more um, laid back or pushed back tone, if you see what I mean. The sepia brings those leaves down so that the flowers themselves stand out even more. And I can spatter using my fan brush and an inky consistency of the brown 
and the violet and I can just do a little bit of light spatter here and there into the wet leaves um, avoiding getting any spatter on my flowers. So the painting's nearly done. Just got to finish off the leaves and paint in these last couple of flowers in exactly the same way but quite subtle. And then again once that's done balance it up with some delicate spatter here and there, not too much, but just enough to sort of bring the painting together and then some pulling the card through the leaves now that the paint's nearly dry and I get a nice vein and some nice sort of texture running through the leaves. And here you can see I've removed the tape and the painting looks really nice, but there's one thing I've forgotten to do and that was to use some cad yellow to paint in um, the little stamens at the centre of a few of the flowers where they are showing, uh, peeping through between some of the petals. And that yellow should complement this violet really, really nicely and just add a nice finishing touch and uh, draw the eye even more to the flowers as the focal point of this semi-abstract painting. Well, thanks so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching how that sort of experimental approach unfolded. And if you're interested in, in a more experimental approach, we do quite a lot of abstracts and um, experiments in techniques and things like that over on Patreon. Um, so thanks so much for watching. And thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon. And happy painting. Bye.